There have recently been some astonishing academically contradictory discoveries unearthed throughout Europe. Archaeologists have been discovering a network of underground tunnels, apparently somehow cut throughout the Stone Age, which cover the territories of Spain, Turkey, and most of the European continent. Their approximate age, according to funded archaeologists, is no less than 12,000 years. Yet how people living within the Stone Age, people without any form of metal tools or chisels, managed to cut thousands of miles of tunnel systems is clearly a considerably contradictory mystery. Thousands of underground tunnels stretching from Scotland to Turkey that have, predictably, placed the many submissive, order-taking funded scientists throughout the academic world at a dead end to explain. However, if one presumes, as the evidence we share here on our channel often suggests, that a past, now lost, highly advanced civilization once flourished here on our Earth, their creation is less of a challenge to explain. Yet the purpose for their existence will remain an enigma. Were they created by a group attempting to hide from something? Or possibly, they were ancient smuggling tunnels left by members of this lost civilization once used to smuggle items from ancient settlement to settlement found throughout Europe. German archaeologist Dr. Heinrich Kusch, in his book Secrets of the Underground Doors to the Ancient World, states that the tunnels were dug beneath hundreds of Neolithic settlements all across Europe, and the fact that so many tunnels have survived indicates that the original network was much larger than that which still survives. Quote, in Bavaria alone, we discovered 700 meters of these underground tunnels. In the Austrian Styria, we found 350, and throughout Europe there were thousands of such tunnels, from the north of Scotland stretching to the Mediterranean itself." End quote. The fact that these tunnels have been identified as having been cut at least 12,000 years ago should indicate to all those still with the capacity of critical thought that they are undoubtedly far older than this, as to state that they were somehow cut by people with literally no tools to their disposal, to us, seems laughable. The tunnels are all relatively narrow, being about 70 centimeters in width, just enough for an adult man to travel through. In some places, there are small rooms, storage chambers and seats, clearly indicating that these cave systems were used by a number of people at a time. How did our ancient ancestors create such an awe-inspiring network of tunnels without the utilization of some form of tunneling equipment, lighting, and indeed smelted metal tools? It is not surprising to us or anyone who has paid attention to the limited tale of events put forward by academia that these tunnels remain a perplexing ancient artifact for them to explain. Yet we feel they are clear evidence of a past civilization having crudely cut these tunnels, possibly for some nefarious reason we are yet to unravel. They are undoubtedly highly compelling. There are many ancient places upon our planet, which we are yet to cover upon our channel. Many intriguing, unexplainable, and thus controversial ancient ruins that, although more than likely discovered and noted by an academic at some point within modern history, has since been banished to selective ignorance deliberately overlooked. This often in favor of retaining one's funding within a certain field of study. Ancient quarries is an area of study that is indeed filled with these ancient anomalies. Seemingly machine stones litter many of the more intriguing locations, one of them undoubtedly Aswan Quarry not only containing an unfinished obelisk of gigantic proportions, but also seemingly later additions, carved as if left by a later advanced civilization. Additionally, the more prehistoric quarries that can be found dotting America's Great Lakes, notably superior, copper mines and quarries fly in the face of currently attested chronology regarding ancient man. We presume that the most compelling of these sites had indeed since their initial modern rediscovery been widely studied by alternative researchers, 
However, Cava di Cusa seems to have been largely overlooked, regardless of its astonishing ancient relics, which can be found at the site. Located three kilometers south of Campobella di Massara, in the province of Trapani, Italy, the entire quarry, and indeed the length of the ruin, is an astonishing 1.8 kilometers long, located upon a natural ridge spanning from east to west. According to academia, this site was quarried from the beginning of the first half of the 6th century BC. This, regardless of the clearly shifted, mysteriously abandoned, gigantic, unexplainable megaliths which still litter the site. We feel, with such unexplainably large stones seemingly left in situ at the site, like many other unexplained sites that can be found on Earth, were built by an advanced ancient civilization capable of building with such enormous stones. The quarry was abandoned in 409 BC, when it was captured by the Carthaginians. Regardless of academia's limited opinions regarding the quarry, we feel the most interesting and possibly most controversial anomalies to unravel are the abandoned cuts still at the site. Just what were these ancient people making? Why did they abandon these curious megaliths where they lay today? How were they able to shift such enormous stones? We feel there is strong evidence to suggest that Cava de Cusa was an ancient quarry, once used and mysteriously abandoned, by a lost civilization once capable of shifting unimaginably enormous stones, and as such, is highly compelling. Our mission upon our channel is to compile and present enough evidence of the existence of a past, highly capable, technologically advanced ancient civilization that once flourished here upon our planet, that it not only proves their existence beyond reasonable doubt, but vindicates all those who have either lost careers, funding or worse, just for telling the truth. Our intention is to display to the world that a civilization once lived here on our planet that not only mastered the art of stone masonry, but quarried, moved, and built with stones of such gigantic weights, not only do their activities escape modern explanation, but have been deliberately ignored, covered up, and denied by an academia who claim to have all the answers. There are many areas of the planet which still possess many of these compelling artifacts, not only supporting our premise and conviction, but baffle all who try to explain them. And although, predictably, rarely shared by academics the world over, one of these ancient places is known to the modern man as Italy. Seemingly littered with not only polygonal masonry, ancient pyramidal structures, multi-ton lintels and archways, but contains countless other compelling, extremely ancient yet surviving features which not only indicates the existence of this past civilization, but have been investigated by a number of alternative antiquarians throughout the eras, who, after in-depth analysis, have come to predictably startling conclusions in regards to their age and, indeed, possible origins. We have in the past covered a number of these ancient sites, one of which being the Cyclopean Wall, which still surrounds the ancient Acropolis of Alatre. And indeed, the astonishing polygonal masonry, which makes up the apparently Greek-constructed Necromantion, a place not only proven due to the polygonal architecture to undoubtedly predate this academic explanation, but also, thanks to our own study of the site, has fingerprints left by a tool within the main chamber, said to be the passageway to the underworld of Hades, that we have identified and linked to a number of other unexplained sites found throughout the world. However, this coverage of the Italian relics we have so far explored is but a fragment of what is actually hidden among the winding streets and rolling hills of Italy. Alternative researchers, most notably Giuseppe Lugli, have carried out studies of the unexplained polygonal techniques, which can still be found existing within Italy. The ancient fortifications and polygonal walls, which were researched and initially noted by Giuseppe, include Alatri, Norma, Arpino, Assini, Saracena Gate, Cosa, Alba Fusens, 
Segne, Pigra, Blera, Lazio, Bomarzo, Latium, San Felice Circio, Latina, Chiusi, Etruria, Toscania, Vitrala, Viterbo, Monte Albano, Sovana, Toscana, Nardo di Pace, Tirna, Lago di Pitiluca, Orvieto, Umbria, Tuscany, Marema, Sorano, Syracuse, Sicily, Val di Saviore, Serviteri, Savignano, and so on. As Richard Cassero puts it, a modern researcher of these enigmatic ruins, quote, The countryside around Rome is littered with relics of a past more or less remote. One feels almost a continuity there, between the ancient and the modern world, with the ancient Roman ruins being almost a familiar presence, as if part of the natural landscape. Yet one also finds there remains of a much older and mysterious past. Massive cyclopean walls encircle towns and villages, their stones darkened by the passing of centuries and millennia. One can never get used to them, so strange they are in their interlocking geometries and so different from the familiar contours of Roman and medieval walls. They loom as a relic from an entirely different past of which we know almost nothing." End quote. And as mentioned, although we have only personally covered the Cyclopean walls surrounding Alatri, similar ancient fortifications can seemingly be found enclosing countless other ancient ruins all over Italy. The small towns of Sutri, Emilia, Pelestrina, Ferentino, Segni, Cesa, Veroli, and Arpino, all in the province of Frosinone, Norba, Cori, and Circe, Cortona, Cuma in the province of Latina, Emilia in nearby Umbria, as far as Ancedonia, Orbitello, and Roselle in Tuscany, and Alba Fucens in Abruzzo, are entirely surrounded by Cyclopean walls surviving to this day in various states of preservation, an indication of a fear these people had of some form of outsider. The stone walls, some of which constructed from truly gigantic blocks, each weighing many tons, are as finely fitted together as the many other mortarless ruins found elsewhere the world over, such as within ancient Peru. But it is their near-impossible acute angles and interlocking corners that caused the greatest of amazement, that just like the polygonal masonry found all over the world, was created as if each stone was individually carved to be a piece of a gigantic jigsaw puzzle. These features, along with their gigantic scale, are relics not only overlooked by the thousands of people who visit Italy each year, but, as we have previously discussed, are overwhelming evidence of an ancient civilization far more capable than any of the well-studied ancestors that academia claim as the original builders. These remnants are undoubtedly evidence of a past civilization that were not only vastly more proficient in masonry than even the modern man, but were also obsessed with building enclosed fortifications, as if to avoid some form of outside invader or possible natural threat. Who built ancient Italy? Why did they build with such focus on fortification? How old are these relics? We feel that due to their inexplicable nature, they are undoubtedly relics left by a now lost civilization, yet continue to be ignored by an academia who deny this people's past existence. Regardless of these denials, we find ancient Italy highly compelling. We have often postulated that many of the ancient sites found all over the world, regardless of permitted academic study, are actually surviving remnants of a once highly advanced civilization now lost within the history of Earth. These exquisitely as yet unexplained structures were, we feel, strategic vantage points, once built for defensive purposes, later exploited for this advantage by civilizations now academically claimed as the creators. As the generations passed within these ancient cradles, the memory of these inhabitations predictably faded. Thus, these sites, for intimidation purposes, 
slowly became attributed to the leaders of the tribes, which now resided within. Many of these modern impostors, predictably meeting their demise within less than a century as modern history was formed, each succumbing to invasion by a slightly more capable group. We feel, on top of the mounting evidence, suggesting that these structures are far too advanced for their modern attributed creators. These invasions are additional evidence of these sites being re-inhabited, rather than once created, understood, and maintained by the actual builders. Many of these ancient sites, we feel, were indeed the cradle of the many, more modern, well-studied, academically claimed constructors. These sites becoming modern tourist attractions, many eroding away to a ruin. However, some, placed within suitable locations for modern suburban development and of such enormous monumental size that, regardless of their unexplainable constructions, have survived, slowly becoming engulfed within the modern world, with academia hoping that they continue to be overlooked by a busy populace. The ancient Acropolis of Alatri within modern-day Italy being one such site. This Acropolis was indeed once the ancient cradle for a lucky few who stumbled upon and realized the potential of this enormous walled-in location built with forgotten and now unexplained polygonal masonry techniques. Who built the Cyclopean Wall which creates the Acropolis of Alatri? How did they build it? Why does academia ignore such monumental feats of ancient, unexplained architectural engineering? We find the Wall of Alatri highly compelling. Many of the words which we use in the modern day are derived from far more ancient sources than most would imagine. Many of the words that we use for objects and activities, which have been around since time immemorial, have their named origins placed near the birth of some of the earliest civilizations to have ever walked upon our planet. As such, if beings such as giants did once exist on Earth, one would not only expect to find enormous unexplained ruins, but also these lexical inspirations given to the activities undertaken by these huge people. Is it then just a mere coincidence that ancient, enormous stone walls are often named Cyclopean? Cyclops, having once been an ancient, one-eyed giant within ancient Greek and Roman mythology. Is it also but a mere coincidence that the giant found within biblical stories named Goliath was also a one-eyed beast? Was the name given to these enormous ruins a clue to their original builders? A clue left upon spoken language, a remnant far more difficult to erase from history than any physical remains. Found everywhere on Earth, and even dotting some of the most remote tropical islands, these Cyclopean ruins still perplex us to this day. Many of the ancient Cyclopean ruins that can be found within developed areas have often been draped with modern architecture. Many suspect that this is often done in an attempt to conceal the true nature of these sites. Italy is a particularly good example of a country drenched in Cyclopean architecture, yet chooses to overlook such wonders in favor of modern development. Scattered throughout ancient Latinium, and yet again, coincidentally, placed at the location of a later flourishing civilization, and actually the first real modern world superpower, Rome, are ruins undoubtedly left by an as yet not publicly disclosed or studied branch of ancient beings who were capable of feats we are yet to unravel. Many classical writers and historians, including Homer, Hesiod, Plutarch, Thuclides, and Diodorus Siculus, among others, posited the idea that the Cyclopean ruins of Italy and others within Europe were erected by this now extinct Cyclopean race. And we seemingly continue to carry this torch. For, to heavily research, not only these particular areas of ancient architecture, but the many individuals who have made remarkable discoveries over the years, along with reels of newspaper archives with an interest in these particular finds, 
and also the suspected individuals tasked with the possible concealment of such. The proposition of an unknown, ancient race of controversial beings, possibly much larger than modern humans, having once existed on our planet, has become overwhelming. Why are ancient ruins, seemingly built by a race of giants, actually named after giants? A name with origins placed far within our distant past. Did an ancient race of giants once build the countless unexplained ruins found on virtually every continent? We find the evidence within some areas to suggest such overwhelming. Thank you. 